accomplished today. We've we've jumped to two systems. Spotted an anaconda that jumped away. Hit 85 kilometers in a matter of seconds. And it's been a pretty productive day. So there's that. Okay. Oh, wait. We combat logged on a hyperdiction. So. Now that we're live, no and we're in the preamble phase of uh, of the recording. Uh. You on a screen share already? <laughs> uh, no. Uh, uh, mm, okay. It, do you, do you want the you want the screen share for this? I sort of do. Because it's not much. I'm gonna be very honest with you. First year. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll get into the screen. Sorry, I'm just. Everything's happening at once. <laughs> yeah, I've noticed. Oh, uh. Notice anything different? Notice anything different. Uh, anything, literally anything. God, let me check. Uh, three of us now. The three of us now. There's something at the bottom. Uh huh. What is that? Wait, wait, do we get, do we get viewers? Well, do we, do we got viewers? What the hell? Well, okay. yeah, that, that's also a thing. Um, was not expecting that, but yeah, but you know, well, just above it. Subscribe 20% off. Is that what you mean? That wasn't because... there before. Yes. Wait, 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 wait. So, yeah, four viewers, awesome. Welcome, guys. Uh, <laughs> Hi. <laughs> yes, oh, this is being I... live streamed. <laughs> um, oh wow! No, 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 no. But that 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 little that little button on the right next to the follow button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That wasn't Subscribe there before. Enough. Are we? Okay, so what's what is this? I've never been this big on <laughs> Twitch. <laughs> I've never okay. been big. On okay, Twitch. okay, okay. I, I, there's a lot of back end that I need to explain with you. Okay. So on Monday, I get an email from Twitch saying that mm -hmm. I have finally got accepted into the affiliate program. Okay. Well, congrats. Thank you. I filled out all the forms, and now that I filled all the forms, got all, everything in order, I'm an affiliate now. <laughs> so, this is like day three. <laughs> this is day three of uh, my affiliation. Yeah, I I gotta I would clap. But I don't want to blow out everybody's ears. Yeah, no, that's, that's huge, funny. man. Dude, honestly, like the the biggest thing that I'm actually really hyped on is like the channel points. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, like I've never done a Twitch affiliation. Um, so this is kind of like a learning thing for me. Like. Not not because I'm like trying to encroach on your, like this is your thing. So oh, I'm not gonna no, be no. like, oh well, awesome. We're both affiliated now. Uh, <laughs> take credit. Take Technically credit for your... my channel, no, just... but no, I uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm I'm definitely gonna use the uh, the sub money for improving the stuff. 
let's buy a studio first. <laughs> it's like, hmm, let this here's an idea. Let's uh do a home let's acquire a home studio. Let's acquire a second monitor. <laughs> let's let's put that up there. Like I be nice. I I have to do like a lot of math and calculations and figuring out how much like getting a good second yeah. monitor would cost me because it's like um it's a lot. So I I'm still learning how this all works. I I'm just happy I've channel points, honestly. Yeah, no, I'm I'm happy for you, man. This is big for you. Um yeah. like I, I think we need some um, lo-fi. Yeah. I feel like we could play a game of League while we do this. I think that would attra I... attract more people. <laughs> <laughs> we could. And then people would leave because of our opinions. <laughs> we, we, we'd we be baiting and switching. Um... Yeah, yeah. Uh, Alright, so. I don't know if that tab picked up this, picks up the sound from there. Can you hear that? Uh, I don't think so. What now? Should we, like, like I can't... subtle? Okay. I can't, uh, I can't hear it. Um, that, but... That's fine, I'm, I need it more for stream. Oh! Anyway. But yeah. Okay, now I can hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. There we go. There we I, go. I, yeah, I had to turn the podcast. I had to turn the volume on the podcast on. Um, oh, man, this is... Big things are happening for both things, of us. Things are um, moving. Yeah. This is exciting. What, wait, uh, big things are happening for both of us? I've you got tell. a contact. I uh, should actually post it... I feel like I should post it to uh, our Discord and then you can kind of like link share it. Um, I went on Fiverr because I'm getting tired of that crappy. Uh, Thanks, Bex. That crappy uh, offer I got from the book. That's still ongoing, by the way. Um, Thanks, Lynx. All right. Uh, thank you, Canadian uh, TV. Can, can I, Canadian TV? This website TV? has. Okay, hang on. I gotta log. Okay. I have to log into Fiverr first. Yeah. Um. Oh. I guess I should just like only post their profile on Fiverr, not their actual, oh. not my messages to them. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't really, I didn't really check it. Okay. Okay. Uh. Well, that's cute. so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, ah, uh, Lynx is asking for uh, what our podcast is more or less about. Uh, we kind of like we run through so, things so that have happened. I've, Link, Zen, Zen, have you seen the show Frasier? And this is this this is the preamble phase. Like we're, we've got four minutes till we actually start the show, but we never show to start the show on time. Let's be honest with ourselves. Let's be really real with ourselves. We never start the show on time. Yeah, we we try our hardest, but like we. Okay. Um. Let me. Let me. Okay. So Fraser. Uh, give me a second. I need to get the overview. Harvard trained psychiatrist is Fraser Crane returns to his hometown of Seattle, Washington, following the end of his marriage and his life in Boston, as seen in Shears. He plans his new life as a single man and challenges to t taking his father, Martin, a uh, retired Seattle police officer, Seattle Police Department detective, whose mobility problems after being shot in the line of duty. Um, basically, he hosts the Dr. Fraser Crane Show, a call-in psychiatry show on a talk show radio station, uh, Kilo Echo Charlie 
Lima. Basically, they make a show which is basically about nothing. It's a show uh, about a show. Yeah, it's, Frasier I mean, it's is about the Great Frasier Crane show. That's it. This podcast is kind of like that. It's not a. We're not psychiatrists. However, this is just a call-in show. We talk about random ass topics. There is very little structure to it. We have maybe a few bullet point notes. After that, it is. Whatever we want. <laughs> that is how yeah, this show we, goes. As a general rule, we don't follow a script just because... I don't know, I feel like... It's like an unwritten it, rule. It, it's not a properly written rule. Oh, um, absolutely. If you... Yeah. Got, um, sometimes, if sometimes if you... If you if if the show's not on and we don't have a we don't have a top sometimes I'm I kid you not we won't have top we won't have a topic till like five minutes before the show starts so yes yeah like, we would appreciate it if you like hit us up on the Discord or actually I should probably like I'm gonna plug the Discord a little bit because I should probably do this and add show I mean, topics. Yeah, um... For, for people who are in our Discord. You know, like Zinn. Who is totally in like our Discord. Z <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hello, Zinn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, am I gonna have to be my own Discord moderator now? <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. I got this. I, I've gotten the hang of this thing. You're in Phoenix 4. Oh, yeah, it's in, the, it's in the Phoenix 4. Okay. Topics you want to hear on the show. God damn it! I've got way too much. Anyway, uh, how many Discord people? Keep do you it, have? keep it safe for work. Uh, that's the rule. Only rule on the show topics is keep it safe for work. That's it. That's yeah. Like, oh, go ahead. Like, just just as a preamble uh, setup, we're going to be talking about uh, Play EDH's recent, I guess, most recent decisions. Like, so. Well, this, we're, okay, um, we have a lot, because we, we haven't done the show in how long? A couple of weeks. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of shit we missed. Ooh, why not start with a big one? Uh, I mean, why not? <laughs> Uh, Zim's got a point there. Why not? Uh, what about morality of humanity? Uh, that's definitely morality of animals. See, I've done a bit of. Can we just uh, do the clap in the opening and then get into it? Yep. There's always the clap. All right. Do the clap. I need to do the clap. Because that's how we start the show. Ready? Yep. <laughs> I'm sitting back in my chair. <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and people of uh, very um great start preferences. Great start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's uh, welcome to Red Phoenix Cast with your host. Um, that's an S on the end. Kevin, it's name Bob, aka Bobcat. Uh, Ibasia, anywhere uh, you'll find me. Uh, Jojo Red Phoenix Cast, Barrientos. Uh, Ma, you can't even remember my cast, bit. You, find you can't even remember my bit. What is this? What's your bit? This is my it's bit. Jojo Barrientos, aka Red Phoenix Cast. Bruh. I, you have them assigned as nicknames. Oh. As middle names, anyways. <laughs> I yes. However, you've done this for eleven episodes, and now you mess up. Okay, I haven't had two sips of coffee. I had one this time. <laughs> Jesus. All right. All right. Fine. So Zinlegs wanted to start us off with a big one. Um, 
I think he was in likes about morality, oh, Jesus. humanity. Okay. <laughs> morality, I mean, we had we had show know. topics before prior to this. We were talking about it last night. Oh yeah, but first we gotta scare off the audience, right? <laughs> Oh yeah, let's just alienate our audience after after literally I just get my affiliate. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, dude. <laughs> well, you know, so sometimes you have to hella, go through the hard Hella part. appreciated. <laughs> Alright, yeah, we're we're getting you, the all clear. You, hey, you Sid, know what? You, you wanted to be our producer. <laughs> you want it, you your chat wanted it. You wanna start this one off. Go the fuck nuts. Um, Clearly honestly, it's not my show anymore. I think the morality of humanity definitely kind of like transitions into one of the topics. So, um, I guess <laughs> okay. What we really want to ask is like, what is kind of like the big uh, inquiry here because morality of humanity is kind of a broad topic to talk about. Um, yeah, that's super vague. <laughs> Not yeah, gonna lie. About, yeah, like if you want to talk about like the morality of, hum of animals versus humans, it's kind of like the animal accepts what it is and accepts its situation for the most part, whereas humanity is kind of more. Okay, okay. But also morality of animals. Okay, yeah. yeah. All right, let's let's start. Let's actually start the show proper with our actual topics. Uh, start right off the top. Post Malone. Yeah. Uh, Post Malone. We'll, we'll start with the Post Malone show. Uh, because <laughs> let's be honest, Post Malone actually plays Magic the Gathering. Uh, yeah, I did not know that. I don't know if that was a thing that I... So, okay, Let, I would like to kind of take this one over. Not crazy hard to understand. Um, he was... Go ahead. Post Malone, musical artist, notably famous for his fucking face tattoos. I hate it drives me kind of nuts um what is seen to be playing on sh on game nights which is kind of crazy i didn't think that would happen but you know yeah that's it that's all i got post malone spot in the wild he was at a he was at a game store and everybody flooded the game store with no social distancing which kind of sucked but you know is what it is. Yeah, I think this kind of like celebrity for me. Um, I'm sure that I will check out. I I, personally... I've heard his music. I'm like not a fan of his music. I'm not a fan of his face tattoos. That's it. That's all I got. And it, it's I've like it his... doesn't. It doesn't even surprise me because it's a shop in California. Post Malone, Ye like Post Malone being. Do you know what's hilariously funny? And I'm I'm on Bleeding Cool. I'm on the website called Bleeding Cool. And I, I will say this. Uh, he he spent thousands, according to the according to TMZ, he spent thousands of dollars, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. While a few other sources speculate that he was the one responsible put placing the winning bid on the Alpha Black Lotus a few months ago. That Black Lotus was approximately $511,000. And if Posty was responsible for that, it is entirely plausible that a new president for the Logan Paul effect... That sounds awful. An anomaly where in the Pokemon training card game where the community where popular instances like Logan Paul have inflated the markets will occur for Magic the Gathering. Here's the thing. <laughs> And I can say this because I've been training for so long. I've been training for not maybe not a decade, but like for for quite a good while. Reserve list cards yeah. have been under pressure since the start, since the first Bitcoin, um, since the first Bitcoin spike. 
under pressure. Yeah. So um, Zinn breaks up a good point here too. Um, this is kind of like because we have had Cassius Marsh, uh, a famous, a famous uh, NFL player, um, on game nights, and that's kind of like affected I the. I don't think it affected that that much. I, I don't think it has it made an impact in the Magic in the Magic Gathering universe in, in an overall sense. Yes, it totally has. However, I do not think that. Someone like Cassius Marsh versus someone like Post Malone is going to have the same impact in this case versus like someone like if you get like Post Malone to play, cool, that's great. Like I understand that. However, it should not normally adjust the marketplace. It should not inflate the marketplace that it has. The the reason and again, the, my logic and reasoning for this is not Post Malone. Cards are spiking all over the place because of Post Malone. No, there literally is a very logical solution to this because most cards, most cards that are easily playable have been going up in price no matter what. Cards like Volcanic Island, Athra's got a passage, that's going up. Uh, sorts the plowshares from the Secret Lair series. The, the, the one with the freaking um, Dargle. On the on, as the art that's going up uh yeah, Greek with so... liege from like from modern masters 2015 that's up that's up in money it's it's not yeah. hard to put a very logical stamp on hey maybe it's not post malone see and i'm not gonna disagree with you um too too much on that part um, I think though, when we first got introduced to Cassius Marsh through game nights, and he's also opened up his own uh, gaming shop, which I've heard the prices are a little bit higher than market. Yeah. Well, that that um, again, you have to think about it logically. Like it's like they they want to make some money on the cards. Yeah, I it's, mean, it's I mean, like he's, anywhere he's else. A millionaire at least. He's it's... a millionaire. He's a multi-millionaire at least. Uh, um. Yeah. But the fact that, uh, so my thinking is Cassius Marsh got introduced to us. He's kind of the, you know, kind of cool jockish guy. Like you, you wouldn't in kind a of a nerd, setting, no, not going to lie. Cassius. Yeah. But if you look at him versus, uh, what's his face from, um, uh, God, I'm trying to remember his YouTube channel. He's basically the science guy. Uh, Brian something. Um, uh, Kevin Hill. Yes, there we go. Kevin Hill. Um, is his first name really Kevin? Um, Kyle Hill. Kyle that's Hill. It. That, I'm dumb. Wow. Yeah. No, no, no. It's fine. Uh, Kyle Hill, like, you, he is the nerd type. Like, you, he's a very smart guy, but he's also, um, on the spectrum, which is, this is something he came out with, but I don't want to, like, broadcast the world, but he's got a here we are. Of <laughs> science and civil and environmental engineering. Yeah, so... And a think, master's like, of arts and science communication in the same university. Well... The, the guy's just, the guy's amazing, but, like, yeah, he's dedicated... If you really wanted to nerd check, <laughs> check out Kyle Hill's bio. <laughs> Seriously. Um, so Zinn, I wouldn't say, uh, that they're raising prices to make money as a result of a famous no, person. I highly I, doubt that those two things are correlated. Yeah, I, it's, I, it I is, don't it's think... a, it's a bit of a stretch. The reason why price has been going up fluctuating in cards for years. It, like this has been happening forever. Ever since the game's gotten its pop, as popularity as it, as it has. It... The last, like this, like between Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic, and somehow, somehow this gets mi mixed into us. Collectible trading card games. I, I, I'd go so far. It has been an under, it has been under pressure since I'd say 20, I, I'd say late 2019. Early. When we, like. And oh, I'd the, say at least earlier than that. Yeah, but, but that's the thing. 
earlier than even earlier than that it's been under it's been under under pressure we've been complaining for years upon years upon years that this card is too expensive then they then the watsi should reprint it take the for thing is take for example cyclonic rift like we've been screaming till we're blue in the face to reprint cyclonic rift they finally did it and surprise surprise after it's, it's so been Hang on, I'm I'm pulling this thing out. I I know this for a fact because like I won't put Cyclonic Rift in any, in any deck as a rule. Um, okay, I Cyclonic Rift from the Double Masters, not the extra one, not the Double Masters extras, the normal copy. Since its reprint back in August, it crashed off the start. It absolutely oh, it cratered did. after start. Because it went oh, from because yeah, it went from like fifty dollars prior reprint to like sub twenty dollars. It held twenty dollars since through the pandemic, and then it since this basically December twenty twenty all the way up to now, it went from twenty <laughs> bucks. To roughly thirty-five dollars, it has slowly come down. To that average of thirty-four dollars. Now that's U.S. prices. Here in Canada, yeah. it's kind of like a bit different, but it, it's, um, it's a little more. Aside, it's a little more. Yeah. So yeah, like now, Watsi's kind of like got a list of cards that they will reprint, but they'll do it as like special bonuses in sets, um, which. It's fine to me. I think cards that are going to be too powerful for their uh, flagship, I'm doing finger quotes here, uh, format of standard, um, I, you're going to want to put those into sets as reprints because these are on demand, but you don't want to reprint them so much that the market's flooded and they're so cheap that people can just buy them uh, on the spot. I, I don't think they care. I I Watsi I don't I I don't think Watsi cares because like if you look at something like uh, Kodoka Forge Master, that cratered. Oh yeah, like I, I mean if like this they I remember it, this card being twenty dollars at one time. Yeah, but we we just got a format of standard. Uh, no, I want to say f no. The figure quotes were for flagship because it's like at this point everybody acknowledges that standard's more or less not the flagship. Um, which is kind of like turns it back around to the Cassius Marsh uh, post Malone thing. Um, because like I said, Cassius Marsh came in and before Commander was kind of like a relatively, I want to say mid sized format. Um, but then you have a guy like Cassius Marsh who, yeah, he is kind of a nerd, uh, as a person, but like if somebody's watching football and they don't know anything more introspective about him aside from, um, he's a football player and he has this many touchdowns and all that stuff. Yeah. They'll, they'll, they know way more about football than they know about anything else. Yeah. And if you're coming into, I guess um magic only having heard about cassius marsh and making that connection and you then you watch uh the episode of game nights you, your mind your thinking starts to get into oh wow this guy plays magic he seems like a cool guy this seems like a fun game uh, i think it goes so, either way i think it goes either way bro because this this could go yeah. for me in, in my head this goes one of two ways either cassius marsh is cool I'm a big fan of Cassius Mars. I'm going to buy all these cards like for Cassius Marsh. Marsh bot. Yeah. Or, oh, look. Or, or, and this is kind of a, what I'm thinking because it's like a bunch of football. Pl like, this is the usual thinking of like a bunch of people who love football. Oh, Cassius Mars plays Magic? What a nerd. Bruh. Why would you play? If you're going to play football, you should only play football. Like, yeah, like it's like I hate to be the negative person here, but like seriously. Well, here's the thing: is I don't disagree with you on that. I think um, 
there's gonna be those toxic types that are just like, oh wow, he's he's a nerd. Why are you playing football if you're a nerd? Get all get out of our our yeah. game. And they're and they're, they're gatekeeping and they're being a dingus about it. And like, but I I think kind of like addressing the gatekeepers is kind of how you get a kind of back and forth with that as well. Like I'm not mm-hmm. saying you're wrong to address that. It's a no, because you're, you're gonna start like a fight. That. I'm, I'm not gonna be. I'm gonna be very honest. You're gonna start a fight. Yeah, but I think for the most part, like the fact I'm I, I'm thinking about subscribing to you. Um, <laughs> it's you don't have to. I, I think as a matter of um, addressing it, like it's good to kind of point it out. Um, hyperbole aside, mm. the thing about it is when we look at it as their gatekeeping but we're kind of like trying to be more inclusive like for the most part magic has a history of non-inclusivity so um my thing about the post malone thing is i think it's good that their celebrity kind of like welcome back is in um we were we were just talking about oh we were talking about the uh Basically, how with Cassius Marsh, we got that kind of more jock type people coming into Magic um, because of his uh, fame and his relation to football. Um, whereas there are those in football who are going to kind of like gatekeep the sport because now he's kind of exposed as a nerd and they might not be uh, receptive of a guy who's more kind of nerdy uh, playing their game. I just kind of like, well, okay, but then we have to address it as players of magic that yeah like it's i think it kind of like goes back to um the morality aspect as well of humanity where we've kind of like assigned this role to males that you got to be big strong tough you don't shed tears and like that kind of like translates into football where whoa we've got a big big and strong and tough and no nerdy stuff and that's kind of like you know, it's literally gatekeeping. I, that, that's literally it. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Like, it, yeah. I mean, when I see something like that, I'm just like, are you serious, dude? Like, come on. Like, really? I'm not going to say, like, all the all football fans are like that. Um, I think there's definitely those who are both ways. It's... Um, it's more... That there are going to be people like that i think on both sides and toxic has a kind of history of being non-inclusive with people from different backgrounds um especially towards women i think it's really improved in recent years mm-hmm. um but there was a guy whose name we will not speak who um hopefully i'm about 10 years well see I think the change has kind of like been, it's been ongoing. Um, Cause I remember back when I used to play Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, I used to play Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, <laughs> we, we like, there's a lot of uh, women who will play Yu-Gi-Oh, especially in their early twenties. Um, it's a game that people will play. I personally don't like it for various reasons, but to each their own. Um, but when I was on a forum that was dedicated to an online uh, thing for Yu-Gi-Oh, we kind of had a rough relationship with identity politics that it was kind of like an unspoken rule that you didn't mention identity politics unless it directly related to um, a situation or topic. And we tried to stay away from those topics, but for the most part, you kind of like get into that um discussion eventually it's inevitable and when card games and identity politics uh come together it's messy it's super messy um (laughs) but like i said i think in recent years magic's relationship with um different groups especially inclusivity Mm -hmm has really strongly improved and i think 
after that incident with uh, he who shall now be named, um, he actually got banned from the game. He what happened is hmm. actually hmm. I'll let you take this one because nope, you're... I, I'm letting you have this one because you, you remember this more fondly than I do. I yeah, I was kind of I wasn't in the middle of it, but I was definitely at first on this guy's side, and then I shifted. Oh, wait, wait. Wait, what's going on? Oh, uh... uh then it's it's not a problem. Uh, basically, the TLDR on this one is... They, uh, do we want to name drop this? Absolutely not. I don't want to give this guy a promotion. Um, That's fair. Yeah. Basically, the don't, the don't TLDR... Worry, don't worry about it, Zen. Uh, the, na the name on this guy really doesn't matter. Yeah, this... But, I'm gonna he, say... Basically, he was super toxic. Like, that's that's it. That's the TLDR. He was super toxic. We didn't want him in the community. Um, there was some other stuff that was really obnoxious and that we didn't like about him. So, yeah, that's, um, that's, the, that's the long and short of that. I would call him Volta Douche myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, the... The... The, or... the, uh, the TLDR on what he did, um, there was a cosplayer, um, cosplayers are kind of a thing in Magic, actually they're pretty big. They've been getting uh, some serious popularity lately, I'd say. And there's some good ones. Um, oh yeah. We'll ones. have to do an episode on that, because, like, there are some really good ones. Mm -hmm. Um, but there was a cosplayer who he sent his, uh, viewers and subscribers and fans after, Which... and it got to the point where she was... She was getting harassed to the point where she up and quit the game. She wanted nothing to do with it. Um, and Watsi, uh, Wizard of the Coast, saw this and told him, yeah, you're banned. And um, the professor uh, to learn Community College, I would suggest watching... I love all you, Brian, but to this is the one time I, yeah. like, we really wish you didn't say something. Like it's, we understand that you need to report on something like this, but it's like we, we there was so many people reporting on it already that it really, I kind of wish they didn't. I wish some people didn't report on it. Yeah, I, I have to so... admit that like as many as much as a lot of people reported on such a thing, I really didn't like the fact that there was like so many people reporting on such a thing. I think it's because of. The nature of what was going on and how far it went there um because i will agree with you that i think running it into the ground as everybody did wasn't necessary i think uh Tulare and community college did in their video address the overarching issue which is um if we as a community are going to grow we have to be able to see when we are going too far mm -hmm. and walk it all the way back because what happened was not acceptable by any standard. Um, and I think, well, I know that if he had been a better person, the guy, uh, Voldemort, as Zinn suggests we call him, I think that's a good <laughs> uh, name for him. Um, if Voldemort had been a better person and hadn't gatekeeped magic from cosplayers, which was essentially the crux of the issue here, we wouldn't have had that situation. He would not have been banned from the game. Yeah, I know. Exactly. Um, but he wanted to play victim and said, oh, well, I'm being banned for... He was my being... Fans uh... Uh, no, he was, he was blaming cancel culture. If I remember correctly. Yeah. But he was playing the victim for his own actions. And the that... ends didn't, didn't justify the means, that's why. That was it. Yeah. So, I think when it comes down to it, like, we have improved from that point. I think that was kind of our turning point in Magic. For the community to come together and say, you know what? No, we're, this is the we're point. Not, it's literally we're, we're not we, having this. This is not happening. And I think it went a lot further than that too. I think that's where the community collectively said, "You know what? 
we have to do, we have to put a mirror to this community and really look at ourselves and ask the question, can we be better? And I say we can, the answer, honestly. Yeah, and the answer has been an overwhelming yes for the past, I don't know, four or five years. Um, Easily. Easily. To the point where to the point where people are going to Watsi and being like, yeah, guys, like, feed us better. <laughs> um, we, we've got, you know, like, the, the thing is, is we've gotten a little more strict of a, when it, when it came to enforcing the rules that, that we, that was implemented. And it's not, they're not hard rules. They're not even hard. They're not difficult rules at all. They're, it's literally the TLDR of it is don't be a dick. Yeah, I agree 100%. And that's kind of been where it's been going. And to get back onto the topic, um, <laughs> we, we, we went on a weird side tangent there. Um, but this kind of reflects on the morality of humanity as well, which thank you, in again. Um, we, we have a couple that... of topics we gotta go through before you can... I'll let you have the floor on that one, because I'm just gonna, like, check out. Not gonna lie. Oh, no! Uh, I'm, like... <sighs> no, go ahead. Um, like, going back to it, I think inclusivity, um, has been our constant, uh, our constant, uh, trajectory with magic, but it's been less oh yeah yeah no that's fine like uh i think it's a good tie-in like we don't have to necessarily focus on that topic but we can kind of like address it as part of a our current topics which i think is a good idea like it kind of gives more substance to what we're saying mm -hmm. um isn't that should be brought up just to know how i think so too um like we don't have to name names or point fingers or anything, but I think that, that's always the case right. with that, with something like this. Or, but that that's the thing. It's, that's always the case with something like this when something like this happens it's because, oh, it's like, uh, oh, it's like it's it's very he said she said, right? Like, like that's that's always kind of yeah. the issue that I have with something like this when something like this happens is like. How much of it is actually he said, she said? Like, my understanding of the situation is, like, everybody knew what was happening. So we weren't just jumping into it and going at it um, without thinking, right? Right. And that's kind of where it is now. Um, and with respect to the inclusivity part, I think... Post Malone, like I haven't heard any of his songs. Um, I might have heard a they're, couple actually. Oh, they're about as good as you expect them to be. I'm not. I I'm very um, kind of mad about the entire thing. Yeah, I think when you have celebrity um, who is kind of more or less endorsing your show, not just your show, but like a game as part of your show. Yeah. Take your endorsements where you can get them. Um, yeah, no, exactly. The the thing with I, <laughs> the thing with post here's a, my here's my stick on this thing. Post Malone doing what he does and knowing like knowing how he is, I have no quandary or problem with it at all. I don't. There's no. I don't need to pick a fight with. With someone who, with with somebody that of of his caliber, I I don't I don't have a qualm, I don't have a qualm I don't have a problem with it. Good guy. Probably. Maybe he's a dick. I don't know. Right. I the problem is, for me I feel disconnected from something like that, where it doesn't it doesn't affect the day to day. Right. Magic in a day to day setting. Is not going to change. You are. We are still in a pandemic. We're. We're still buying cards, and selling cards. In that instance, I should be like looking to start selling some of the cards that I own. Yeah. 
But in essence, there's nothing that really changes here that already is already a thing. Yeah, I think it definitely, um, fans of Pulse will watch your game nights and kind of get interested in Magic as a result. I'm not saying mm-hmm. all his fans, but there might be a There's huge going to be some overlap. Number. That's it. There, there's yeah. going to be some sort of overlap between Post Malone fans and people that are that are that enjoy his content, and I understand that. And I think people yeah. should also understand that it's just like, oh, you know, oh hey, we're gonna we're gonna have a bunch of like Post Malone fans that are gonna come in and just be like, yep, we like Post Malone. Yeah. Um. I brought up Kyle Hill because I kind of want to brag about this one. Um, during an event, um, last year was it last year? Yeah, it was last year. No, it was, was it last is year? the year prior. Um, remember, remember that. Um, oh God, what's it called? The online tournament, the Magic, the Commander Fest, the online Commander Fest with uh, by Channel Fireball. I'm following. Um, I got put into a game with Kyle Hill. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, you, you told me about this. I didn't have a microphone. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, it was terrible for me. I got my butt kicked by his, uh, by his, uh, Corvold deck. But I will say... Oh, he's that... Uh, oh, Kyle's a Corvold player. Groan. <laughs> Cringe. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, no, 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 no. But... I, 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 I mean that I mean that kind of halfly respectfully, you know, in a sense of, uh, like... I, I don't mean that in, like, a bad blood kind of thing, but it's just like, ugh. Corvold. Yeah, so... Um, Dude, that I that's was... the thing. That that's the thing right there. It's like that little my little interaction there. You have to take something like if I say something like that, you have to take it with a grain of salt because I don't. I'm not serious. Because oh no. that that's just me saying that I I particularly don't have a sim. I don't have a fond of like, like of Corvold as a card. The deck is just. Yeah. The deck is Jun Sacrifice. Everybody knows what you're playing. The deck is very linear, and I'm just like, okay, cool. Like, thanks, thanks for it's. For me, that's a deck that screams, "Hey, thanks for coming." Yeah, I'm gonna ruin your day. I'm gonna ruin your shit. Oh no. Oh, this four four hundred forty channel points. Awesome. We are getting channel points. Oh. <laughs> yeah. We you are getting channel points. I should say. Um, but. I will say, um, Kyle Hill was, he was, despite my, um, lack of microphone limitations. Yeah. Limitations in communication. Let's say <laughs> he was in communication. <laughs> okay. <laughs> God damn. Um, did you, did, God, did you need to bust out the, the fancy English? <laughs> you, you, you gotta, well, yeah. as, as, uh, as mama, used to say if you can't dude you gotta fake it till you make it oh (laughs) Oh my lord no no um i'm glad with our three viewers i'm hoping i'm hoping they're enjoying the show as well um (laughs) dude god that was painful but um he was pretty uh, awesome to play against, even if the game only lasted like oh, something's. Oh, what's going on here? You good? What is my? I think I'm thinking somebody's trying to call me, but I could be wrong. Uh, uh no, oh. we're good. Um, okay, we're good. I think I just gotta turn off my uh, my alarm clock. Which is, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm turning these off. Um, Sorry, I'm, I'm so, giving him, I'm giving him a bit of a hard time because of some, because of this. But you know, it, this, this is, this is how the show goes. Is like 95% of the time I'm just being a dingus and doing my own thing. So we do have more topics. Um, 
the Post Malone thing is kind of. Oh yeah, uh, the internet was just being choppy. Oh uh, okay, which is that's weird. Nice. Yeah, it happens. Um, so we're gonna switch gears here because I think the Post Malone thing we said all we need. We said our to piece say. about it. We don't. Yeah. We, we don't need to go further. Um, play EDH. Um, I think we'll save that for last because I don't have too much more to say on it aside from what's been said already. Um, but you said there's a couple of things going on here. Um, so, yeah, I, I want to, I, I, we'll, we'll, we'll save the play EDH one. Cause I think we can get that done in like 30 seconds flat when we're, there's not, there's no need to touch on it too crazily, but yeah, just moving our bit of the narrative forward here as I pull up my notes. Cause I, let's be fair. I didn't prepare this ahead of time. Come on, notes. Come on, notes. Ugh. Uh oh. This, um, this technical difficulties, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, some other stuff not magic related. All right. Damn. Yeah. Clearly, my notes is having giving me issues. Cause, uh, yeah, that sucks. Oh well. Um. I. This I can make this official, I guess. It, 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 the the stream is has affiliation. Y'all already know. Come, on, I we yeah. we talked about this in the preamble. Uh, if you guys are here for that already, I have my affiliation now. I fi fi filed the forms on Monday, so yay! I've already done the stream to celebrate this entire thing, so we don't we don't need to keep bringing the stream, keep bringing that around. Um, what else? Is there, like, do you have anything? Because that was the only thing I had in my mind right now. I did not realize that you, uh... Ran out of content? <laughs> I thought you had war. I was going to, like, dude, what? I I really <laughs> did not have anything this week, and I, I really just took a break from, like, a lot of non-magic news stuff i've took a I, I'm, yeah, no. I'm actually taking like a huge break from like a lot of like magic news and stuff like that so i guess i guess we could touch the touch on the play edh for like the last 30 seconds of the show anyway um so yeah play edh decided they wanted to move to a monthly subscription service uh it is rumored so far Uh, I can't remember all the details on that one. Uh, I think I think you, this one you have a little bit more details on it than I do. I uh, yeah, there I was like in the middle of this, like not as a focal point, but as a uh, oh, we lost a we lost a viewer. That sucks. Um, <laughs> but as a uh, somebody who was kind of like in the middle of it, mm -hmm. kind of. Um, what ended up happening is PlayEDH, um, they're basically a Discord server for playing Magic the Gathering, uh, the Commander format. Um, they basically started up as a uh, as a match with the, with the pandemic. Um, because for people who do play Magic and especially uh, Commander, our go-to was to play it either through Magic the Gathering Online, which is, it's not a great program. I'll it, say that. Much. It looks like it looks <laughs> like something out of like 1990 computer software. It's yeah, so not pretty. It's rough. I think for the purpose that it serves, it's passable. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's... Damn, for the surface, for the thing that it does, it does well. But for the for the for the looks and aspect of that, boy howdy! Uh, <laughs> ooh. It could definitely use an improvement. I think it needs a facelift in this day and age. It's been around since what I think twenty thirteen, something like that. Yeah, exactly. I think that's about right. 
I, th I think in seven years, you can do a few updates where you smooth out, where you iron out the uh, technical stuff. Then I look at Arena, and I realize that WotC, despite their um, wanting to go into the digital market, are not making the right effort, which... I... Fine. Kinda disagree. This one's complicated, because it's like... In an over arc, in a, just an overall general sense, the use of um, the use of a Magic Arena as a gateway to like playing Magic the Gathering f without spending a lot of money has been a brilliant tactic to get people to play Magic the Gathering on their computers, on their now cell phones, tablets, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's been genius. I will give them credit for that. Yeah. Um, it hasn't been pretty. At all. Okay. Uh, to get, I, I don't, I'm this, I'm not discounting the fact that Watsi has not been too good at some of it. The economy has been kind of mad. It's been kind of rough. Some things that have been really hard to been hard to play with. There's there's a bunch of issues, and I I under and some of it's understandable. The the thing that I have when it comes to like magic is that you need also need to understand that magic for a lot of people has been basically some people's bread and butter so yeah. for for someone like kevin and i we've been playing magic for how long oh i'd say since like 2016 2017 for me yeah i think you've been in longer <clears throat> yeah uh for us it's it's another it's just another thing in the bucket I, another thing in the bucket for us so it i'm i'm particularly i i don't feel too affected by it and i'm not too bothered by it and that the reason why i'm saying that i'm not too bothered by it is because i, I there's not what what is what if watsy was going to make a move for something like this would it make sense that they would it make sense if they were to do something something like oh they want to change the change the algorithm for how this that or some of the things that work yes it would make a lot of sense to make that happen are they really going to do yeah. that probably not uh, the i'm particularly of the of the mind of hey you know i i have a very low expectation with magic arena because a, it's Magic Arena. There's not my expectation for something like this is very low. I I don't expect that. I I personally don't expect that a lot of the fixes will happen right away. Yeah. And um, go ahead. Yeah. Oh no no, I just wanted to kind of like get us back on topic here because like you. You do make some good points about Magic Arena. Um, definitely there need to be some fixes that I think makes it more streamlined. I think the economy needs to be improved. Um, often the comparison is to Hearthstone, which is... Um, I, I think everybody's pretty well familiar with Hearthstone here. Um, basically Hearthstone has a decent enough economy in my opinion. I haven't played it in a while, so it might have changed. Um, but to me, it has a passable enough economy that any kind of issues you might have are kind of on you, but also maybe some tweaks here and there. Yeah. And um, again, again, there's a lot of this where a lot of purposes of the, of the, hey, we've figured, we've kind of figured it out. Yeah, and that's that's perfect. Like I, I know League of Legends has their own card game too, and I've heard the economy in it is. It's fantastic. actually pretty good. Like it, 
Yeah. I, I will it, cut it in beats, on that. Uh, it beats Arena by miles, by like leaps and bounds. Mm -hmm. um, which is kind of like, okay, this new League of Legends thing has a better economy than you do. It has a better system than you do. Why did you spend three years on a barely, well, I won't say it's barely functional, but like for the most part, for a game that it's uh it's a uh, competition that just came out it has a much better uh design setup yada yada like what did you spend those three years doing um mm -hmm. and every time i see a state of the game on reddit i'm just like i get more and more depressed about the dev team just like are these people even being paid <laughs> Like at this at this point, they're doing a lot of uh, they're doing a lot of spike moves. So I don't know what the relationship is like with Watson, the dev team. I would hope that they get more people for it. Um, but a lot, like I'm it's not for Watson, it's a lot team. of a lot of their stuff is marketing, right? So really, I I understand that there's a lot of game balance problems. That's kind of par for the course for... It's been a par for a course for, for myself. I know, Kevin, you've been on the receiving end of bad mat, like matchups where it's been atrocious. I, yeah, I've, like, I've played um, decks and stuff that, like, I know for a fact these decks will either win or they'll lose or they'll just be fun to play, which is fun. Um, but getting back onto our topic, uh, Play Dates was the answer to the pandemic for Commander players. Um, uh, spell which table, is... actually. I I'd say that's more spell table. Yeah. I think Play EDH kind of like functioned as a unifying um, presence to kind of link us to spell table. So that was kind of like the big thing. Um, so we're going to go back over it. Um, Commander is a 100 car singleton format in Magic. Um, you have your commander and you can only have a single copy of each card in your deck. Uh, basic lands and cards that have specific rulings, uh, novels. There's a um, lot of it, like there's a lot of asterisks. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, uh, they do have a ban list in that, but generally uh, it's a four player game. It's really fun. Um, I think even if you get into like a pub stomp game, there is some fun to be had there. But generally, as an overview, the uh, community around Commander does not—they frown upon uh, pub stomping, which is yeah. pub stomping is when you take a higher power deck into a game with against uh, opponents that are not as uh, I want to say. They don't Basically, have decks that are run strong. people over by playing such super powerful cards in a in a in a in in a way that ultimately makes just everybody miserable. Yeah. So um, to get back onto it uh, after that rundown of uh, what Commander is. Um, Play EDH set themselves up as a Discord server to uh, connect people uh, online mm -hmm. um, so they could get Commander games in. Because, like, being starved for that, for that was kind of hard for a lot of us. So having that option available was nice. Um, they've been running for a good year now. At one point, they opened up a, pay a Patreon, and I used to be hard against Patreon because I'm part of um adult gaming communities that are like developers get into um the community they uh, make a game and for the most part like a lot of them are pretty good at what they're doing so you know uh respect the hustle <laughs> yeah uh, but there are always going to be those untrustworthy elements that you're just like well this is barely a tech demo why do you want me to pay for more content when you're not even giving me you know anything to work with here um so that's kind of like been my um experience with patreon there have been um other developers and i don't want to go into it too too much especially since we don't have an nsfw uh rating on our uh, uh podcast stream here. <laughs> has a plus 18 rating um, but that's yeah i can understand that 
Uh, yeah, we we, we too, could. So. Yeah, uh, we could talk about like because I do kind of want to get into it. It's been a few years, so I think the topic's fine. There have been developers that have done regular updates to a point, and then they either vanish or their updates are so sparse and incomplete. And it's basically running a racket um, mm -hmm. on a community that, for all intents and purposes, wants content. Um, so my experience with Patreon has been a fairly negative one because of those people. I've gone back to Patreon and supported a few uh, people, so it's like... Um, but to get back on topic, because I keep jumping off into side tangents... Um, <laughs> So, PlayDH started a Patreon. I never contributed to it. I think, um, as a thing of, if you want to do it, um, is fine. Um, as a aside, like, they did have tiered, uh, rewards, which is, um, you know, you might get your deck check expedited, like, you get better games, yeah, yeah. Basically, you had... Um, better chances for better things if you subscribe to their Patreon and contribute a certain amount. Which, again, that's fine. Um, people gotta get paid for, or not even people gotta get paid, but like, people, um, if they want to get paid for the time and there's enough of a audience for it that, you know, these people will pay you, that's fine. I, I can respect that hustle. Um, yeah, there's there's nothing in, about this that is like don't knock the hustle, basically. Yeah. Except, but then. Oh, go ahead. No, you, you. I was just leading you on. Oh well. <laughs> um, but then about three weeks ago, I would say a good month ago, actually. There. Play EDH took a look at their server numbers. Um, so Discord has a hard limit of, I think, to of about 5,000 people per server before you have to contact. Like, they have a 25,000 uh, limit, but after 5,000, you have to contact uh, the Discord devs so you don't get hit by a slowdown. Um, mm -hmm. And what... And uh, PlayEDH took a look at their sidebar and the number of members on their server, I think. This is just me speculating. Um, and saw that they have over 40,000 uh, members. Um, so they offered a service, a curated service, uh, which was, we'll check your deck, we'll put you into uh, a ranking uh, based upon your deck, so it was like battle cruiser, low, mid, high, and competitive. Um, basically, how the rate, the rate, the rankings go is battle cruiser is basically your deck has no strategy. It just likes it, to play mm, big things. It's not that it doesn't have a strategy. It's like the strategy is the biggest, dumbest, biggest creature. Turn it sideways. Yeah. yeah, low is a bit more focused on like how you're going to win, like you're going to try to win through a combo, but you don't have the necessary tools to accomplish that. Or, um, the, or, con or the combo is very convoluted. Yeah, um, mid is a lot more focused. It's like your combo uh, is a bit more streamlined. Um, your strategies get very streamlined, but you're not going hard into... I'm gonna win on turn three. <laughs> yeah, uh, um, most most of the, most decks are in this category. Yeah, in a fair high a, is. Oh, go ahead. Most, I'd say mo, a good chunk of I'd say about seventy to eighty percent of decks that fall into this category, and then it's like there's a couple of percentages where the low category is like uh, a buddy of mine has like hats tribal. Do we know yeah. what happened? Like, it's not, it's not an actual thing. It's a thing. It's not an actual huge thing, but like, again, a lot of this is just, hey, we're doing this thing because why not? Because we're having fun. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, Zin brings up a good point about it. it is a technical conversation. I think that kind of, uh, yeah, that's, yeah. Um, I, I kind of want to finish it just like high is where your fast suitors come in. Your deck's not going to run as many chunky boys um, as we call them. And competitive, just like straight up, we uh, is basically what it says on the box. It's a competitive uh, version of Commander, which Commander is usually hyper a casual efficiency. format. It's it's hyper efficiency, very very high tuned decks. Uh, yeah. It's most things are going to be very on on par with. You're going to notice there's going to be a lot of things that are combos that are very fast and easy to get, to make uh, to get off the ground. So, uh, our I think a stickler one is like the fastest Oracle uh, Demonic Consultation combo. That just instant wins yeah. you the game if you can get that one off. Um, hyper efficient spells, a lot of uh, very hyper efficient mana, mana bases, uh, a lot of like, fast acceleration. It's a lot of that. There's, there's, which is, there's not, again, nothing wrong with it at all. It's yeah. just a um, time so, and a place for everything. So play EDH uh, basically offered this curated service, which was, for the most part, it's fine. Um, the problem with it is their staff were not good at, um, at, uh, judging decks. Uh, judging power levels. I've been in games with decks that are too powerful that basically we're playing uh, a variant of a format called um, uh, what's it called? Oh god. Um, basically where we gain up on one person because we can't keep up with them any other way, which is eh. I'm not a fan of it. I think everybody needs to be equal opportunity on the same footing. That is said. Mm -hmm. Um, so they decided about a month ago, they've got over 40,000 members. Here's over $40,000, uh, per month that we can pay. Uh, so we're going to start charging for our service. Um, everybody can, uh, they basically put it up where it was like, okay, if you want to use our ser our server and our service, you have to pay $1 a month. Um. And one dollar a month for a lot of people, for I think ninety nine percent of people, is pretty easy to uh, pay. Um, it's reasonable. Yeah, the problem with it is there are other servers, and I'm part of like at least three or four of them out there who offer a similar system for a smaller audience, which I think is kind of play EDH's problem. Um, but they offer. A similar service and a similar uh, function to play, play EDH, and they kind of exist. They actually do exist. Like they're they're getting bigger because we've mm -hmm. done some promoting. Um, but play EDH also, as an aside, has a form where you can uh, say, "Oh yeah, I can't pay the one dollar a month," um, but they. From my understanding, have suspended the form um, since last week because they were getting so many submissions for the form, and it's like, well, <laughs> yeah, you 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 initially offered a free service, then you decided that you wanted to get paid for, which fair enough, but you've got competition in the same market who are doing what you are doing except for free, so. Mm -hmm you kind of shooting yourself in the foot with this. Um, the And when I say I was in the middle of it, I was in the threads. I was basically addressing the issue of, okay, well, if you're going to be doing this, are you an actual business? Are you set up with the proper uh, tax agencies in the countries where you operate? You know, like all this other stuff. And they're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We've, we've done it. We've discussed it among the stuff and I'm like, uh, have you discussed it with a lawyer? Have you got a degree in business? Have you got a license as a business? All that stuff. And like their response wasn't technical or uh, or thorough. It was 
you don't need to worry about this. We've already figured it all out, which tells me you haven't figured it out. You're just trying to avoid. It's kind of hummed and hawed. Yeah. That's, um, that's what I'm hearing. Yeah. And so we somebody actually brought up that Watsi has a policy that you can't actually make money um, on their content. Uh, well, you can. But it can't be directly related to using their intellectual property. Um, so that's kind of run its run. They've kind of run into that as a potential issue as well. Um, which kind of like comes back around to the you got greedy and now there might be consequences for it. Um, so I like I said, I don't mind people wanting to get paid for what they do. Um, and especially if you're already offering free service, but you're kind of like, you know, the extra cash flow helps go a long way. Um, like I said, I'm part of a couple Patreons who, one of them is a game developer who basically releases all his updates for free. But he's done such a good job that I want to pay him for it. Yeah. And they um, should. Like, that's that's the difference right there. Yeah. Or, uh, was it Travel Kai, aka the EDH channel on YouTube? I suggest checking out him out if you want to get into EDH because he's got some good videos. Um, he uh, also releases his videos for free. But he's got a Discord server that you can gain access to if you uh, pay him money on Patreon, which is, again, like I said, this is not a bad thing. He's doing his content for free, but you get the benefit of being able to poke him in Discord and stuff. I think that is fine. That is good content. That is a good um, compromise for viewers who may want a bit more um, but suddenly paywalling your content because you see the potential in making money is not a good look. I think that's incredibly greedy. I think you should, uh, really, I guess, workshop it with the rest of your staff rather than going 110 on it and thinking that this will be fine with the broader audience because I can guarantee you it's going to get a bad reaction um and I'm not saying that as like don't do this ever like I said uh like I keep insisting it's fine if your intent is to just kind of like get paid and this is an option for people but don't make it the only way to access your content, um, unless this is content that is basically new and an option for people who are already familiar with the content. Um, and I don't apply that as, um, God, I'm trying to think. I don't apply that as like a TV show or something like that's a whole different thing altogether. This is, you're an established um, presence already, and now you're trying to um, exploit your audience. Yeah. And I'm not big on that at all. And, th and that's, I feel like there's a bit of a disconnect for some people that like, if you were already making free content and then you're adding on more content, but it's behind paywall, but you still have the free content as your base, that's fine. The fact that they started 100%. with free content and then they switched to a paid service feels a little scummy to me. If I really, I, I was hoping to, you know, I've been waiting for quite a while to get a deck check, which I have not gotten. Yeah, you've been since the beginning of Play EDH, haven't you? Pretty sure. Yeah, and like, I've had deck checks that have been really eh, not great at all. Um, so, and that's kind of the thing, like... So, I, I'd say in a sense, 
it would be easier if, you know, if, if do I have to pay money to have an improved experience? I, I, that's hard to tell. Would I pay somebody to pay, have a better experience over for a certain product? In a general sense, yes. But if I was getting that experience, if I was going to be getting a good experience for free, but now you're telling me I have to pay, pay to get this basically the same experience, but I've already been getting a bad experience. There's no, really no point for me paying for it. Yeah, and the thing with it is this is different from a free trial because this is a long-term thing. And free trials nowadays will tell you from the get-go, yeah, you're going to be paying this much after your free trial. And I'm fine with that. That's like, That's okay, if I like your service, yeah, if I like your service enough for the first week or month or whichever uh, that I have it, I want to pay for it. Like, straight up, I'm going to pay for something that I like. Um, yeah, and the, again, it, it's it's very understandable in that in, in that standard of the stuff that you're giving already for free was already good. That's the baseline. Was your product already yeah. good enough that your free content was already good enough there to say, "Hey, I want to support you financially. I want to see the show get better." Yeah. Do I get free content in, so, on? Do I get more content from due to this? Yes, but at the baseline model, you have to sell it as here's free content. It, it's it's yeah. literally okay. I I I'm going to quote Gary Vaynerchuk on this one. It is the jab 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 right hook model. You yeah. are. It's give, 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 and ask. That's the difference. You give, you give, you give, you give, and then you ask. That's the difference right there. The What Play EDH is doing is give, 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 and then take. Yeah. So versus, versus that's... Like, I, I'd say... Who's one of the... Um, I, I'd say the model of... Uh, of uh, how they, I like Jimmy and Josh got the model right. Yeah, it's of this because it's like their content was already good. Yeah, but so again, it's the di that's the big difference right there. It's the give, 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 ask versus the. Versus the give and take, right? Like that's that's the big difference between, between the how Patreon usually would work, how it works, versus how people think it would work or should work, or you know. But yeah, go ahead. The fact that Play EDH is going with the the give, 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 and then take model feels bad feels terrible for the consumer on, on on every single aspect of it the reason why the, a lot of content creators have been going with the give 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 and then ask model because it's a more human experience you are getting you feel like we've been giving you good great content for years years sometimes it's years yeah. sometimes it's months Sometimes it's months, sometimes it's years. Yeah. We've been giving you great content for years. We ask for your support. As we are venturing yeah. into bigger and bigger projects. There's the difference. We are asking for your support. That way we can do bigger and bigger projects. So that's yeah, that's so where that's why I feel like play EDH kind of sh kind of cut the ball like shorted the ball there, and it's on un it's unfortunate, but you know sometimes you get the short end of the stick, right? Uh, May first, that their experience is worth my their spending. Uh, so there's a Reddit post about this. Uh, somebody was asking uh what the consensus is right now. 
Um, he said, what's the say of the uni? So that's that's a really interesting uh, way to address that. Um, one guy said, I've had nothing but good experiences, da -da -da, playing for about a year now. I haven't tried quitting the game in afternoon yet, but I'm assuming it won't be too bad in terms of thing. I mean, I'm a deck check back within a day or two. So it's literally $1, so I think I have the game. Uh, magic every single day from the comfort of your own home with pretty balanced power levels. Yeah, a few times seems about the same, nothing really pain. Mornings still suck, afternoons are slow but doable, evenings are fine. I had a slight issue with my Patreon falling off, but the mods quickly fixed it. Uh, experience hasn't really changed in terms of queue times. Queue times seem to be slightly longer. So what I'm seeing here from a lot of people um there's one really toxic one here if you have to consider when spending one dollar a month monthly consolation uh then clearly mtg is not the right hobby for you lol ps to you and all people who downvote don't forget to buy the next secret layer i've heard it's spongebob pringle time so that's really toxic that's trolling. um that's trolling yeah i think um, there's one guy who posted, imagine having to pay money to play a card game. Uh, again, like, it, it, come on, trying. guys. Yeah, um, what I've seen for the most part is that queues are not, like, there's no benefit to it in terms of queuing up. Um, which is kind of a shame. Yeah. Um, but in terms of um, it seems like deck checks are getting done a bit faster, uh, but nothing's really changed. For a dollar a month, you're getting the same experience you would get if it was for free. I'm not... I don't know. I think it could be a better experience if I'm paying for it, which is kind of the yes do, is I would expect more from the experience. Mm-hmm. Which kind of like goes back to what we were saying before, like the reason why you would contribute to uh, Patreon is because you're getting more for what you're paying. Yeah. Um, You've already like the baseline of already getting something for free was like was good, and it's good enough to say, hey, I want I want to support you guys financially. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that's that's basically it. Um, I don't know that I can say more on this topic. I think we've kind of like we've, we've run we've our beat it, we've beaten it to death already. I think we've beaten it to death already. Yeah. Um. So a couple of things before we go, because we like to end this on a positive note. Um. Even if uh, our uh, viewers drop as we went on. Like I said, we oh, to scare people away with our opinions. So. <laughs> it's nothing new. So, I applied for an HR position with uh, one of the uh, EDH servers I'm involved with. Ooh. I haven't heard anything back from the guy who handles all that, but he's tripped with anyways. I'm not gonna lose my head over it, but uh, yeah. for the most part, I think it's gonna be something that uh, I can get into, so, hmm. you know, that's a thing. Keep me, um, keep me posted on this one, I'm, I'm, very, I'm quite interested. Yeah, um, that, I don't, uh, can we post links? I don't think we can post links in your, uh... In chat? Say. I'd, in my chat? Um, not, not really, it's got a pretty heavily modded thing, because, uh... Yeah, so that Fiverr link I sent you, uh, Yumika Chan 20 um, on Fiverr, is basically their art style is kind of like anime ish. I'm gonna grab a couple of the pictures um, because this is actually some really good stuff. Um, in my opinion, uh, mostly does female characters from what I've seen. Um. You know what, just throw it on the Discord. I already have the screen up. We could just switch over to... Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go... I forget to... Memes? Is it memes? No, just, uh... Shoot me the... Shoot me the link here. 
Okay. Um. Yeah. So I'll shoot the link. Their person's uh. Yumika Chan. Yumika Chan. Um. Come on. I swear to God. Um. Copy. Uh, paste. So, uh, they're Indonesian. Um, but they have an art style that I really like. Um, so I sent them a, an example of, um, basically a detailed description of what I want for my book cover. And for the most part, uh, it sounds like they're gonna do it. They said, okay, well, you know, do you have any images that I can use as a uh, reference points and I said to them uh, you know like the descriptions I've given you um that's what I'm gonna go on but um if you want some uh, reference points from the media um, no, I, I got the link up feel sorry. free yeah feel free to uh just tell me, uh, basically I'll show you those reference points from other media so you can kind of like have a general idea of it. Uh, actually just so, drop the link in the, uh, drop the link in the Discord, it should be fine to drop in there. Pretty sure you have my Discord. <laughs> yeah, I, I dropped the link in, uh, our stream chat here. Um, but yeah, like you can see the art style, like that's, that is some stuff that I personally, uh, that Find is that, good. That hits that serotonin, my dude. Yeah, um... So... This, for me, is an experience, um... Because getting this book going has been kind of, like, on the table for... 10 years, and... It's something that I'm... Excited to get doing, and get somebody who can, like, illustrate stuff for me. Is a big leap for me. Um, so I'm hoping it works out here. Uh, okay, yeah. No, it, it looks um, amazing. Like, I, lo I like this art. I'm kind of liking this artist. Uh, there's a lot of, like, a lot of the anime. I love that anime style. Style stuff. Yeah, and I. Yeah, and I. I my, like, my book is heavy. So it's like. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of where I want to be as a writer, um, which is hopefully at one point with cross promotion, it's gonna start taking off. Um, but yeah, there's that. Um, there was something else I wanted to say, but I can't recall for the life of me. Um, I think that's about it, uh, ladies and gentlemen. This has been Red Phoenix Cast. Um, before we go, Jojo, do you got something you wanna? Oh. Nope. Stick around. There. Uh, I'm just having to take something off here really quickly. Uh, stick around. We're playing some elite. Da we're playing some elite dangerous. There's gonna be some Thargoid fighting later, in maybe like as soon as the show is over, kind of thing. So yeah, stick around for some Elite Dangerous if you guys want to check that out. I'm just flying out to the the hunting grounds right now. As you can probably kind of hear it in the background. Yep, um, geez, I was, I was going to ask if you want to go out, but yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, maybe a little later. Yeah, that's fair. I've, I've got some stuff I got to do here anyways. Um. Oh, right, uh, new, potentially new job on the horizon here, so I'm not going to quit the podcast like I was... More, nah, that, more I think that's a little bit more private, time. I think you want to hold back on that one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, um, but yeah. Well, Anyways, where, where, where can we find you there, Kev? Uh, so, on Twitter, I'm... Jeez, I gotta remember this thing. I think I gotta write it down at this point. Um, <laughs> I am NinjaBobCat on Twitter, Discord, and uh, Reddit. Uh, Kevin Ivasiak on uh, Facebook, although who uses Facebook nowadays? <laughs> Lol. You can find me on Wattpad. Um, same old, same old. Uh, NinjaBobCat for my understanding. 
second. I am, no, on Wattpad Ninja Named Bob. Um, I try to regularly update on Wattpad with uh, story updates and stuff. This next arc, I'm still trying to figure out because I want to focus on one character, but it's kind of like, mm, how am I going to get three other characters to kind of screw off? Um, anyways, so I'll look out for that. And you can also find me on the socials at Red Phoenix Cast. You can find this show on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Red Phoenix Cast. If you're already live, uh, if you're already watching this on Twitch, you do it there. There's also a subscribe button. We have a subscribe button on Twitch now. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Affiliation status! Um, honestly. Eventually. Yeah. <laughs> Affiliation status. Um,. It, honestly, it means a lot to me, guys. If you guys, if, if you do subscribe, you do subscribe. If you not, we're gonna provide you this free content on, uh, day in, day out, no matter what happens here. Um, and you can always just check out the uh, check out the show at uh, yeah here, Red Phoenix Cast. It's on Twitch. We do this on a weekly. We try to do this on a weekly basis. We missed a couple of weeks. I do apologize. But stay tuned. Uh, also, stay tuned because Elite Dangerous coming up like. As soon as I, as soon as we're done the show, basically, I flipped the script. So you you guys are getting two big things for. Uh, You're the getting price a double dose else. today. You're getting the double dose today. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Red Phoenix Cast. Subscribe to uh, episode twelve. Subscribe to post to Post Malone. Um, <laughs> uh, I think I have it to subscribe to the Post. Subscribe to Post to Post Malone. <laughs> we tricked you. We are not posting Post Malone. Um. <laughs> yeah. But um, you all have a good one. Yep. See you guys. And that's it. That's the show. Ta-da! Now let's switch over to Elite Dangerous. Oh, trust me. I'm making that work right now. Give me a second. Oh... I guess the little small thing. I downloaded a... Let me check what the app the, is called. The, I is. just remembered. Hold on, I just yeah, yeah, remembered yeah. how this works. Okay, I downloaded Zedge. Um, it's an app where like you get like different content and stuff. Um, like wallpapers and that. I downloaded the Gaur the Gaurgura, uh oh, no. alarm clock. A alarm, yes. It's basically... It is what I have wanted as an alarm. Um, I wish I wish it was the edited version with uh, Corona doing the uh, beep, 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 beep repeatedly, but, you know. Um, Bruh. Well, it's a good way to wake up in the morning because, like, your first inclination is, what the hell is that sound that's annoying? Um... I don't know. For me, annoying sounds are a good thing to wake up to. <laughs> not, not like they're pleasant, and I would always want to hear them. But as a, I gotta get up. Welcome back, Zen. Um, I gotta get up because I need to shut off that racket. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's like. We wrap the show up, Zen. Yeah, so we, we kind of. It's 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 time to switch to. Really dangerous because I, I'm playing the game, and I want to show the yeah. I'm playing the game. So, that deal, deal. Said... I, I I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> oh no! Okay, I actually have to kill stream for for a second because I have to reset everything. Oh, okay. So yeah. Um, that came out was a little bit more aggressive. Oh. <laughs> The screen is still flat. It's, it's like a 30 uh, second reset. All right, it's, it's not too bad. Back in a flash.